So, what have you done? <laughs> like ever? <laughs> no, I mean, what have you done with AI? I mean, it's um, one of the things um, about this is, I mean, I think everyone is fascinated by it. I mean, everyone is uh, absolutely blown away at the current capability and wondering what the potential for the future is and whether or not that's a good thing. I think it's going to be a great thing, but I think it's not going to be all a great thing. And that, that is where I think that's where all of the complexity comes in for people. It's not this like clean story of we're going to do this and it's all going to be great. It's right. we're going to do this. It's going to be net great, but it's going to be like a technological revolution. It's going to be a societal revolution. And those always come with change. And even if it's like net wonderful, you know, there's things we're going to lose along the way. Some kinds of jobs, some kinds of parts of our way of life, some parts of the way we live are going to change or go away. And eat, no matter how tremendous the upside is there, and I, and I believe it will be tremendously good, you know, there's a lot of stuff we got to navigate through to make sure. Um, that's, that's a complicated thing for anyone to wrap their heads around, and there's you know, deep and super understandable emotions around that. That's a very honest answer, that it's not all going to be good. But it seems inevitable at this point. It's... Yeah, I mean, it's definitely inevitable. My my view of the world, you know, when you're like a kid in school, you learn about this technological revolution and then that one and then that one. And my view of the world now sort of looking backwards and forwards is that this is like one long technological revolution. And we had, sure, like first we had to figure out agriculture so that we had the resources and time to figure out how to build machines. And then we got this industrial revolution and that made us learn about a lot of stuff, a lot of other scientific discovery too. Let us do the computer revolution, and that's now letting us, as we scale up to these massive systems, do the AI revolution. But it really is just one long story of humans discovering science and technology and co-evolving with it. And I think it's the most exciting story of all time. I think it's how we get to this world of abundance. And although, you know, although we do have these things to navigate, and there, there will be these downsides, if, if you think about what it means for the world and for people's quality of lives, if we can get to a world uh, where the, the cost of intelligence... And the abundance that comes with that, uh, the cost dramatically falls. The abundance goes, ways up, goes way up. I think we'll do the same thing with energy. And I think those are the two sort of key inputs to everything else we want. So if we can have abundant and cheap energy and intelligence, that will transform people's lives largely for the better. And I think it's going to, in the same way that if we could go back now 500 years and look at someone's life, we'd say, well, there, there's some great things, but they didn't have this. They didn't have that. Can you believe they didn't have modern medicine? That's what people are going to look back at us like, but in 50 years. When you think about the people that currently rely on jobs that AI will replace, when you think about whether it's truck drivers or automation workers, people that work in factory assembly lines, what, if anything, what strategies can be put to mitigate the negative downsides of those jobs being eliminated by AI? So... I'll talk about some general thoughts, but I, I find making very specific predictions difficult because the way the technology goes has been so different than even my own intuitions, or certainly my own intuitions. Could we maybe we should stop there and back up a little? What we what were your initial thoughts? If you had asked me ten years ago, I would have said first AI is going to come for blue collar labor. Basically, it's going to drive trucks and do factory work, and you know it'll handle heavy machinery. Then maybe after that, it'll do like some kinds of cognitive labor uh, kind of, you know, but not, it won't be off doing what I think of personally as the really hard stuff. It won't be off proving new mathematical theorems, won't be off, you know, discovering new science, um, won't be off writing code. And then eventually, maybe, but maybe last of all, maybe never because human creativity is this magic special, special thing. Last of all, it'll come for the creative jobs. That's what I would have said. Now, A, it looks to me like, and for a while, AI is much better at doing tasks than doing jobs. It can do these little pieces super well, but sometimes it goes off the rails. Uh, it can't keep like very long coherence. So people are instead just able to do their existing jobs way more productively. Um, but you really still need the human there today. And then B, it's going exactly the other direction. It could do the creative work first, stuff like coding second. Uh, they can do things like other kinds of cognitive labor third. And we're the furthest away from like humanoid robots. Hmm. So back to the initial question, if we do have something that completely eliminates uh, factory workers, completely eliminates truck drivers, delivery drivers, yeah. things along those lines, that creates this massive vacuum in our society. So 
I think there's things that we're going to do that are good to do but not sufficient. So I think at some point we will do something like a UBI or some other kind of like very long-term unemployment insurance something. But we'll have some way of giving people like redistributing money in society as a cushion for people as people figure out the new jobs. But and I, maybe I should touch on that. I, I'm not a believer at all that there won't be lots of new jobs. I, I think human creativity, desire for status, wanting different ways to compete, invent new things, feel part of a community, feel valued. Uh, that's not going to go anywhere. People have worried about that forever. What happens is we get better tools and we just invent new things and more amazing things to do. And there's a big universe out there. And and I think, I mean, that like literally uh, in that there's like space is really big, but also there's just so much stuff we can all do if we do get to this world of abundant intelligence where you can sort of just think of a new idea and it, it gets created. But but again, that doesn't, to the point we started with, that, 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 that doesn't provide like great solace to people who are losing their jobs today. So saying there's going to be this great indefinite stuff in the future, people are like, what are we doing today? So, you know, we'll, I think we will as a society do things like UBI and other ways of redistribution, but I don't think that gets at the core of what people want. I think what people want is like agency, self-determination, the ability to play a role in architecting the future along with the rest of society, the ability to express themselves and create something meaningful to them. And also, I think a lot of people work jobs they hate. And I think there's, we as a society are always a little bit confused about whether we want to work more or work less, but, but somehow that we all get to do something meaningful and we all get to f play our role in driving the future forward. That's really important. And what I hope is as those truck driving, long haul truck driving jobs go away, which, you know, people have been wrong about predicting how fast that's going to happen, but it's going to happen. Um, we figure out not just a way to solve the economic problem by like giving people the equivalent of money every month, but that there's a way that, and we've had a lot of ideas about this, there's a way that we like share ownership and decision making over the future. Um, I think I say a lot about AGI is that everyone, everyone realizes we're going to have to share the benefits of that, but we also have to share like the decision making over it and access to the system itself. Like I'd be more excited about a world where we say, rather than give everybody on earth like one eight billionth of the AGI money, which we should do that too, we say you get like one eight billionth of a, a, a one eight billionth slice of the system. You can sell it to somebody else, you can sell it to a company, you can pool it with other people, you can use it for whatever creative pursuit you want, you can use it to figure out how to start some new business. Um, and with that, you get sort of like a voting right over how this is all going to be used. And so mm. the better the AGI gets, the more your little one eight billionth ownership is, is worth to you.